Hey guys, so lately I haven't been uploading videos, and the reason for that is because for the last two weeks I've been busy practicing digital art. I've actually had a drawing tablet for two years, but I've never used it. I mean, I have used it for like 10 times when I first got it. But lately, since it's vacation, I thought I should try it out, and I felt like it felt much better than when I first tested out, so I thought it might be interesting for a lot of you to hear about my experience of getting started in digital art as a traditional artist. Specifically, I'm a pencil traditional artist who almost exclusively draw in anime style. Now don't get disappointed that I draw in the anime style because a lot of other people do that, because a lot of things that I talk about in this video will still apply if you are just a traditional artist. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the challenges that I face when I was getting started in digital art and some positive things that I really like about digital art and of course my thoughts about digital art compared to traditional art. Now before I get started, just to be clear, the program that I use is Photoshop and the tablet I use is Wacom Intuos Pen and Touch Tablet small so it's a small version which is a pretty bad choice but it's not a choice made by me my brother bought it for me and i don't know he probably bought it because he thought it was cheap so poor decision i really recommend you to buy a medium because this leads us to the first issue that i have that i faced when i was getting started in digital art and it's that the size of what i draw and my hand movements do not match this is combined with the fact that where I draw and what is being drawn are not in the same place because I draw on the tablet which is on the table while what I draw appears on the screen and this kind of hand-eye coordination is quite hard to get used to in the beginning especially if you have never tried digital art before because if you are a traditional artist you are so used to like what you draw should appear on where you're drawing them but of course, this goes away pretty fast, actually. But two years ago, when I was testing this out, I really felt like, oh, this feels so uncomfortable. So I never got into it. But for the past two weeks, I've kind of just felt like it, it went away, that kind of feeling. So I think it took me like two days to really get used to it. And now I don't really have that problem anymore. But the real big and important issue that I have with digital art is that everything becomes so clear and concrete that every mistake that I make becomes magnified. This is mainly because when you use a pencil, no matter how hard you press on the paper, the pencil will never make a completely black line. Actually, it will be very far away black. It will be like maybe gray. And also it will be a little bit blurred no matter how hard you try. But in Photoshop, you can choose a brush with hardest 100% and then you make really, really hard lines. And also you can choose whatever color you want. So everything becomes clear that every mistake you make becomes so pronounced and this can be both a positive and negative thing depending on how you view this it's negative because it discourages you from trying to draw because honestly you know there, there are some mistakes that i've never cared about when i was doing pencil art but then when i get got into you know doing the same art on photoshop i saw so many things i couldn't see when i was using a pencil to draw that and that was very discouraging. It also takes longer time because you have to perfect every single line. Because if you just look at the video in this time lapse right now, I spent most of the time doing this artwork, just doing the inking part or the line art part. And the reason for that is because every time when I try to draw a line, if it's not beautiful, I have to just undo and then retry it. And most of the time I have to try like five to 10 times before I get a line that I really like. And this is just one of the things, of course, there's just colors and all your things and the brush type and things that you have, or everything has to be perfect or feels that you have to be perfect. Anyway, for those of you wondered, the artwork I'm showing you in time-lapse right now is kind of like my first official and complete artwork done in Photoshop in digital art. So I try to keep it a little bit simple and more suited to my style. So it is more like a, a simple anime style and with very simple coloring and shading because I think I'm not that good in coloring and shading yet. And because everything is so clear and obvious that I feel really obliged to, to do the coloring. And the thing is, when I use a pencil, because I never use coloring pencils, I actually never color my artworks as most of my subscribers know. None of the videos I make on YouTube have any color in it, except for the animation. 
Now this has made me realize how bad I'm really at coloring and shading. Now this is interesting for me because I now get to learn something new and it's not just coloring, there are also some very small things that I never really cared about when I was doing traditional art but when I got into digital art it became something kind of like a new thing for me to learn. So it's more like a positive thing actually. Another positive thing is that you, now you know what you're really bad at and you can like focus on improving those skills so that you can just be a very well-rounded artist. Also you can learn to be more precise simply because when you're doing a pencil everything becomes a little bit blurred and if you're doing it in, in digital art you can just erase all the sketches and, some, uh, and things completely and also you, you get to do really really hard lines which is a good thing. Now on to some good aspects of digital art I really like. Well first off obviously you get to use so many tools that you simply can't use in traditional art. My favorite tool in digital art is layers. The thing about layer is that it allows me to do things that I never, I mean that is impossible, simply impossible in traditional art. For example if you want to draw a sketch, you have to draw it so lightly with your hand, simply because you can't erase it completely. No, well no, that, that, that has nothing to do with layers. Now the thing about layers is that uh, you can erase things on, that are on top of something else that you don't want to erase. And also if you want to apply colors and you also want to keep the line art, then you simply can't do that in traditional art, but you can do that in digital art. So it allows so much more flexibility and so many more results than what you can achieve in traditional art. Well, of course you can do that to a certain extent if you really spend a lot of time and have all the tools, but you know, most people don't have that much time and effort and tools to do that thing. Another example of some tools I really like is transformation tool. The transformation tool is simply that you can mark a place and then you can scale it or skew it or rotate it. That I really like because you know when you are almost finished with an artwork and you find out that there is something wrong with for example like the head is too small as in this artwork I'm showing you right now in the time lapse. At the end I scale the head a little bit because I thought it was too small but that thing is simply impossible in traditional art you simply can't scale it well technically you can using some super robotic paper I don't know what the, that you can scale the paper but most often you can't do that so you just have to stick with what you get on the paper now another positive thing that I really like about digital art is that everything is so much more convenient because in traditional art you have to get the paper, you have to get the pencils which are physical and they, they are separated and also you have the eraser and if you want to do more complicated art you also have the coloring pencils and the brushes and maybe the inking pen and the inking, what's called fluid inking, the, you know the, the, the fluid that you stick your pen into <laughs> to apply the, the, ink. Yeah, the ink. <laughs> yeah of course it's the ink. But in digital art, all you need is just a computer and a tablet. Well, of course, when you open a computer, you have to boot it up, which probably takes more time than you just have to take out a paper and start drawing. But it's much more convenient than you know having all the separate parts and separate tools. And not only that, in the computer, you also have all the tools that you can imagine. Like, you can have every single brush that you can think of, you can have every single type of erasers, every single type of pencils or whatever tools that you might want to have, which also makes it cheaper than uh, traditional art if you want to achieve the same results as in digital art. Well, except for Photoshop, which is notoriously expensive, but of course you can always go for an ethical thing of piracy but I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because that's kind of illegal so I don't know do what you want and another thing that makes it more convenient is that you don't have to scan your artwork because in traditional art you have to scan your artwork in order to for example use it in as your profile picture or post it on I don't know Facebook Pinterest, Deviant Art, but when you're doing digital art, you basically have the digital file, which makes it much convenient. And also, if you want to scan a real life paper, you have to also edit out the grayish color that is the paper itself. Well, of course, you don't have to do that, but it makes it much more beautiful. But it also makes it much more cumbersome to edit it every time you want to scan your artwork. 
So after all this talk, you can probably guess that I really enjoy digital art. Now this is a little bit surprising for me because I actually stopped for two years before I got started in digital art after I got the tablet at first. But it was surprisingly easy and you also get to do so many things that you simply can't do in digital art. But I know that a lot of people really don't like digital art and really like exclusively pencil art or traditional art. Now don't worry if you're like that because you can just stick with what you want and I'm also not gonna give up on pencil art. I mean, I feel like pencil art is more like a thing that I do when I have the paper right beside me and I just have a very impulsive urge to draw something in my mind and then we just take the pen and start drawing and don't bother to go and boot up my computer. But if I really want to do a very complete and official artwork and maybe even post it on DeviantArt, then I will probably do it on the computer. Now I will of course continue making tutorials on traditional art, but I will still continue to explore digital art. I'm looking forward to improve my coloring skills and shading skills and all my other skills that I found out when I got started in digital art. For those of you who are interested in digital art as well, digital art is kind of like a trendy thing and more and more people are getting into digital art and if you're looking to have a career in art, you might want to consider digital art because most companies out there are employing people who have skills in digital art simply because the tools available in digital art is so much more broad and accessible and convenient than traditional art. So that's it for this video and I will try to be more active from now on and see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.